This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Listen, I know that people in my space, in my cohort here on YouTube, if you will, uh, independent media, that we talk about the importance of independent media a lot. And the reason we do is to draw some kind of a distinction between traditional mainstream media and what we do, that we are not beholden to corporate interests. We are not beholden to outside influences other than what the truth is. And listen, it's not a general blanket criticism for all mainstream media. There's a lot of people out there who do a good job. In fact, uh, the person I'm going to talk about today usually does a good job. But when a failure happens as monumental as this one that took place yesterday on Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan, it has to be talked about. We're in a situation right now in this country where we are led by old people. And that's not necessarily negative. I've talked about how I'm generally opposed to an age limit, an, an extra restriction upon running for office or holding office in the United States. It's, it's, it's anti-constitutional, extra-constitutional. But it's certainly a problem when people serve past their prime, past their moment of efficacy relative to their health and their mental well-being. We've seen this with, with Dianne Feinstein. We've seen this with others. We've, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg served far longer than she should have and imperiled the country by doing so. And Mitch McConnell is another one. And uh, this video, the title of this video on YouTube was something like, Mitch McConnell uh, finally addresses his health problems once and for all. And it's, you know, more than a 10 minute video. And it's only at the very end that he addresses his health concerns or settles the matter or whatever, however they phrased it. And then it's like a minute, and it doesn't get addressed. He says, well, I'm fine now. I'm recovered. I'm totally recovered. But then the question of recovered from what never gets asked. Someone who has a high profile, important position in mainstream media should be asking these basic, basic questions. Watch this wholesale failure on the part of a normally great Margaret Brennan. United States and abroad. People wonder about your health. How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm completely recovered and uh, just fine. Uh, You and your office felt the need to to share and disclose some of the details about your health because of some of these public incidents. And the doctor here said there was no evidence of Parkinson's disease or a stroke or, or a seizure. Um, and I wonder, is there anything the public should know that wasn't disclosed? Uh, I'm in good shape, completely recovered, and back on the job. So does that mean that you think you are able to continue serving and you want to continue serving here at a time when we are talking about incredible dysfunction in Washington? I think we ought to be talking about what we were talking about earlier rather than my health. You've made clear you have a lot of policy disagreements with the former president, Donald Trump. Doesn't it trouble you that he is the front runner for the Republican nomination, given the questions he has raised about aid for Ukraine, for example? I'm not going to comment on the various candidates for president on either side. That's a failure. That is abject rookie moves on the part of Margaret Brennan. It just is. Recovered from what? That is the obvious follow-up. Look, I don't do the number or the even the number of high-profile interviews here on this channel. I want to do more. Certainly should do more. But even for somebody who's a, a Luddite, if you will, doesn't have the years of experience that Margaret Brennan has, the, the natural follow-up is recovered from what? What was your underlying condition that found you to be catatonic in a public setting? That found you to be staring off, doing the thousand yard glare, unable to speak? You are the majority leader 
of the United States Senate. Why couldn't you talk when asked a question? Uh, This is just a failure. And I believe that part of the reason it is a failure is because of the cozy relationship, the, the, the oftentimes too symbiotic relationship between the press and the people they cover. There's a, a, a sense of, of uh, camaraderie. There, there's a sense of, uh, of, oh, I got to make sure that I maintain this relationship so I can get the next scoop, rather than just asking the basic question, what's wrong with you? It, it is not too much information to be asking. It is not, he is not entitled to all of this personal, oh, this is, this is medical information, Not when you're the Senate Majority Leader, it is not. Not when you're the President of the United States, it's not. We are owed this information as citizens of this country. He is, the the people who he represents in Kentucky are owed this information. We need to know just what is wrong with you in order that we decide whether or not we're gonna vote for you again whether or not your colleague should replace you with someone else in the position you currently hold. And the media, which holds a special place in American culture, it's the only private uh, occupation mentioned in the Constitution as protected. They have an obligation to rise to the occasion and ask the basic, easy questions of our leaders to at least ask to follow up and not these closed-ended questions. Should you still be serving? Do you want to be serving? Of course he wants to serve, and it doesn't matter whether he wants to. It's what good will come of it, what bad, more importantly, will come of it. Mainstream media, I think, has some idea that on the horizon, hopefully not too far into the future, their number is going to be called. That we in independent media are gunning for you, metaphorically speaking, of course, that you are no longer going to be as relevant as you have in the past. People like me and others with larger platforms, larger corners of the internet, are going to be doing the work that you should be doing asking the questions that you should be asking. At the very least, calling out the mistakes that you make. And this isn't even to to cover the fact that he's being treated as a normal person, Mitch McConnell, a man who who has eroded and degraded the fabric of this country through his Machiavellian and anti-constitutional, anti-democratic strategies of how he runs the Senate, through which all of the president's nominations get funneled through for confirmation. But, you know, do you want to serve? Oh, that's great. Fantastic. Oh, you're totally recovered? Awesome. Well, that's a, whoo, what a relief. I would like to know, I think you would like to know, what in the hell is wrong with Mitch McConnell? Oh, they've ru- your, your doctor has ruled out Parkinson's and seizures, but uh, no other questions. It's fine. Totally normal thing that's happened on multiple occasions. Do better. Do better. What do you think? I'd love to know. Am I off track? Am I off base? Am I too angry about this? You can uh, leave a comment below. We can talk about it in the comments. You can also call. Leave me a brief, brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, If you appreciate what I do and you want to help support independent media, uh, if I'm not your guy, find somebody else who is and support that person. Uh, It is important. But if I am your person, if I am the, 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 the flavor of political commentator that you appreciate, if I bring you value, Click the join button below for $2 a month. You can become a channel member. You can hit the super thanks button or you can go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I am on social media at Dollamore everywhere. I'd love to see you there and I will see you next time. Until then, be genuine. Take care of one another.